you know, it's like, I'm all, hey, you're four blocks away, but I hit me up with the garage band thing, you know, <laughs> and I'd be like, pick up the acoustic guitar. I'm like, I got a thing, dude, kind of like you and I are doing right now. It's yeah, like, like a Zoom like, call. What do you got, dog? What do you got? You know, it's like, <laughs> yeah. this podcast is all about you and your journey in music. And of course, we'll talk about the new record uh, that you guys just put out as well. Fantastic. Thank you for that. Cool, cool. Uh, originally from what, Mesa, Arizona? Mesa, Arizona, yep. Yeah. Born and raised? Born and raised, yep. Came up here. I, I personally moved to Wyoming for about 13 years, but my father lived here still, so I came back uh, for summer times, and uh, the rest of us kind of joined a band and made one, well, made a band, I guess. <laughs> yeah. And made things kind of go uh, to where they're at these days. Right on. How did you get to music? Uh, I was always in, I was into music because of skateboarding, honestly, like, I mean, in general, back in the day, just, I've always loved music. My mom used to sing uh, all the radio songs in the mornings uh, on the, you know, I, was, I thought it was kind of cool. And then uh -huh. from there, I was like curious about like, how she knew all these songs and the words at the same time. Now with, you know, current radio, you find out that everybody knows the words because it's the same song over and again. Yeah, they play the same you record know. every 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah exactly so it intrigued me though as a, at a young age and then uh from there my mom's always sung my, my uncle has always sung and it kind of got my uh my wheels turning and then i got a skateboarding at a young age and punk rock and music of that nature came uh mm -hmm. pretty much full of full force into my life you know and uh from there i went for skateboarding and then at the same time started getting more into like actually being a singer in a band and here we are Right on. I also got into music through skateboarding as well. That's cool. Um, yeah. I'm from San Diego. Well, I've seen your band play a handful of times. You guys played San Diego quite a bit. Yeah, quite um, a lot, man. Soma, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, but through skateboarding, it was like, that's how I found out about like Iron Maiden and Misfits and all these bands just through, uh, you know, Descendants, just through these old skateboarding videos. Yeah, like 411, like all the oh, old school dude, 411 was sick, yeah. <laughs> dude, I remember like, <laughs> I had the second episode was like first by first 401 was Jeremy Jeremy Ray, uh, which was like not very well known skater, but that time he was like my top dog. You know, I was, I was like, uh -huh. he's doing some cool stuff, you know. And then you know, Muska came along through those videos and oh, like sure. you know, all the all the greats, you know. And so the music came along through those videos, and I was like, oh, that's cool. Yeah, I remember I like fast forwarding to the end and trying to see who who the artist was in that certain part. Like that's how I found out like hip hop was huge. Like far side. I remember oh, seeing, yeah, like that they were like drop was in one of the videos. And <laughs> I'm like, Whoa. Yeah. It became a big one. The big hip hop scene, like around that time too, for sure. Like the classic hip hop. That was great. I mean, it was like full on you know, killers for all the skate scenes. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. So when did, uh, you, when did authority zero start? That was in when you're in high school. Yeah, 94, man. Um, so again, I moved to Wyoming. I, I used I was born out here in Arizona. Uh -huh. And then um, parents divorced. And then I moved to Wyoming. But my dad stayed here in Phoenix. Okay. And so I'd come out here for the summers, you know, visitation rights and all the fun stuff. Of course. And uh, during that time, I got, I met a, a kid next door, Jeremy Douglas, or I'm sorry, Jerry Douglas, my bad. Jerry Douglas, uh, next door at the same apartment complex. And we became best friends like my only friend here in arizona and so from there um he had friends in high school that he was attending here in arizona at westwood high school and uh we just kind of started playing around making music a little bit you know here and there in the summer times and i come back you know again the next summer and then we started you know making a band so here was, we are <laughs> yeah was it was that the decision to kind of stay in in arizona was because i mean it must have been difficult going back and forth between Wyoming in there to keep the it band was, kind of going. Yeah, it was funny because like, you know, I told my mom when we started the started the band actually, uh, I was like, I was like, hey mom, I'm not coming home. I started a band, it's gonna be huge. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, no, you're coming home. And that's cute. And I was like, all right, mom, love you. You know, kind of thing. Sure, sure. Uh so, but I mean we, you know, we had our first show here at Acoustic at the Ascends of Coffee House. Uh, with all acoustic, you know, which all our friends from that high school came out, supported us. And then we had our first big show to us, which was like my dad and like four people, maybe, at the Mason Jar in Phoenix. 
and we're like, oh, this is huge, you know. Mm-hmm. And then uh, from there, we went to, uh, I had to go back home to Wyoming. And then my parents uh, in Wyoming, uh, job opportunity came up and we had to, they had to move to uh, St. Louis. And they're like, well, you have the option to move to Phoenix, stay with your dad, or come with us to St. Louis. And that's your option. And I was like, okay. I'm like Mesa. I'm like, you kidding me? We started a band, it would be huge. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a kid's dream, you know? So, right. And here we are. We're still a band, and we're still forcing. You know, and you forcing. guys got some success. What with the first EP, you're selling it pretty, pretty solid, right? Yeah, it was pretty cool. It was, it was a good start, you know. Kicked off the ground. It's like any uh, starting off band. It's, it takes a moment, you know, a moment or two, and you know, you gotta keep on working and keep on building the fan base and keeping people excited about it. We just got kind of weirder and weirder and more excitable about every show. And was that so, like, yeah, because so, you guys get signed to Lava Records, which is a major label, right? I mean, that must have been a huge moment, a kind of like a validating, like, told you that my band's going to be huge. Like, we just signed a major label contract. And that's when mom and dad became real proud. Yeah, that was one <laughs> I was like, I told you, I told you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I was curious. So t- tell me about how did the, the Lava Records thing kind of come about? Like, were you, so, like, how, how were you scouted out by them? Yeah, so we had um, a local company here, a local radio station, uh, Edge 103.9. Uh, 10, well, at the point, it was actually 100.3, 106.3, The Edge. And we had a buddy doing uh, the Scott Punk show. It was like, was punk rock every Sunday only, local bands as well as like punk rock bands uh, for like two hours. It's our wow. friend, Cra- Cra- yeah, Craven Moorhead. Uh, his name is actually Derek Steinsicker, and he's been like a huge uh part of this whole puzzle here with our band um we kept on like dropping demos off at the front of the station you know and doing the whole thing like the every band does like it's like here's one song please play it they have a thing called backyard bollocks which was like right in your backyard kind of cats that you know in your hometown and i was like let's please get on that you know and he took a listen to it and uh it's like a very old school track recording of a song called open eyes from way back when and um mm-hmm. he hit me up and he's like this sounds like an old sentence to me and i was like cool because like that's awesome <laughs> <laughs> yeah totally right. and so yeah so he played it one night like, i remember exactly we we're sitting in my drummer's house jim wilcox in the back room of his house his parents house at that point in time and we had a small boom box and it was like just tuned in the rio station we heard that song playing on the radio we we're like Oh my, you know, freaking out, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. So I mean, it changed our huge moment. Yeah. Really, totally, man. It changed our world, like our mentality completely. Like, like, we're just having fun doing this, obviously. It's been seven years at this point, just playing as a band. And then all of a sudden, there's like a radio thing, even like a small, minute piece of it in a very cool way on the Scott Punk show. Mm-hmm. So that was the coolest thing to us, was like it was a really cool little anomaly, I guess, moment. And uh, we're like, guys, we can go anywhere. We can just keep playing our asses up and see what's up because now we're on the Scott Punk show and you know we got excited, right? Of course, and so from there, um, it went to uh, he was kind enough to actually pass it on to Nancy Stevens, uh, who was the PD at the actual radio station on the big time of it, right? So, and again, a local station, and we did some new recordings and uh, did songs like Sky's the Limit, One More Minute, uh, things like that, and mm-hmm. Put a, a better quality product, uh, which we recorded with Derek as well, and it started being a constant rotation thing, and people started calling in locally here. Wow. Like, well, what was that song? What was that? What was that? Who is who? The hell, who is that? Like, oh, these are like your local cats, like down the street. You saw them last weekend. You know, that's cool. I mean, I come from a radio background. Like, I, I've been radio for not now but currently, but I was in radio for 16 years, and San Diego was. I was at 91X, which is you know we played authority zero stuff like but not and to get in regular rotation especially not having a record label like that's a huge accomplishment i mean not a lot of people can get in that door honestly dude i mean i said a lot of other people that were so kind and friendships you know developed through that with derek and nancy and the whole station robin ash all that you know like they were all so kind like along the way and we we met up with them and talked you know and stuff along the way too but mm-hmm. Uh, they got the calls in, which was blowing our minds. We're like, okay, cool. And then 
go back to the point of uh, the radio station, or I'm sorry, the record labels. Um, the regular label started saying that there was a band playing being played that wasn't signed to any said label, but they kept on getting played on the radio station. Right. Like, like a bigger, you know, suit here in Phoenix. And so they started getting curious, like, well, who is this band? And so we had Lava come out and watch us play a couple of shows, like uh, down in South Scottsdale, like at ba- uh, Electric Ballroom, uh, Bash on Ash, things of that nature, you know what I mean? like old school spots and uh they're like and crowds came out which was really cool and we we were still blown away ourselves and then um they came out and saw that they're like that's probably like a fly by night kind of thing like people are just excited for the moment Mm -hmm. kind of deal is what i with my understanding and then we kept on playing shows and the song kept on playing uh we kept on playing shows and shows got bigger then they got more curious and then uh came out again and then from there Universal Records started coming out. You know, we were going for like Epitaph and you know Fat Wreck and all this stuff at the time too, because you know punk rock band were like, hey, yeah, oh yeah, you know, you think be, about yeah. That's that's like every kid's dream of like a punk rock band as a you know young age. Um, but these guys were like just barking down a tree, which was great, and we're like, okay, well, what's up? Right. And so we had some sit downs, had some conversations uh, with management at the time, as well as the uh, labels and. Uh, things kind of got into a um, kind of a bidding war, I guess. You know, yeah, so. <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> Tell us at the same time, it was like we were like, like we used to like forty bucks, to like hit the road. You know? <laughs> right, right. So we're like, you're gonna put our record out? Like we're just a bunch of shithead kids, you know? It's like right. right, you know. If I'm allowed to swear, I'm sorry. You can swear. Yeah, no, go ahead. <laughs> right, cool. So, but it was like it blew our minds. Like we were just, like we've been playing already at seven years at this point, from fourteen to like now 20, 21 years old. And all of a sudden, uh, it made a difference and made some kind of impact in the outer world besides just our little zone, I guess. Uh-huh. You know? So it blew our minds, and um, that happened. And then we signed the contract, and then we were on the road, and we've been ever since. Wow. So you put out a passage of time, and what they threw you on, you did what, Warp Tour or something right away? Or like, what was the first kind of shows that you did? First kind of shows we did were like, I actually go to Florida. Like, we went on tour. Like, we were on tour for at least 300 days of the entirety of each year for wow. probably four years. We've not stopped touring since, but I mean, right. that was, you guys are young, get your ass out there and, and break. Yeah. Ground. yeah. Right. That's, Were you well, supporting I, other bands at that time? Or was it kind of like, you're going to headline, go up, go figure it out. No, we were totally support. It was like, we were support band guys. And like, we didn't make any sense for anybody. Honestly, it was like one of those things. It was, it was abstract the way we went on tour. They, you know, every band, we weren't really a punk rock band. We weren't a reggae band. We weren't a ska band. We weren't a hardcore band. But we were just this thing. Right. Of, of music <laughs> yeah. That we enjoyed so much, you know. Uh-huh. And thankfully, to this day, people love the thing that we've become or have right. been years. Um, but I mean, we did like the hardcore tours. Like, one of our first tours was uh, uh, Slightly Stupid back when there oh. were three people interesting yeah like way back in the day like we're talking like right out of the gate when they were still coming up and stuff us our friends and pepper like you know yeah. all, all the birds it was like you know the reggae ska thing and punk thing all collectively made a lot of sense you know yeah. everyone's grown so much since then and uh we're all still friends and just like it's just interesting we went from that tour to doing a tour right thereafter with h2o from the east coast yeah so, and then, you know, we're not a hardcore band. We're, we're, it made more sense nowadays, I guess. We got more aggressive, I guess. Right. But back in the day, it didn't make a lot of sense. <laughs> For, uh, our, our band, people are like, you know, they're all, hey, what are you doing here? I'm like, oh, I'm screaming in your face. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Was so, it hard to, to win over those crowds with like H2O? You got to work, dude. Yeah, yeah, you had to work. You had to work. You had to like, get the confidence and like be like, hey, still music. Uh, still the same message, just in a different timbre, you know. And uh, yeah, it was it was difficult. It was it, with each different genre of like said genres of tours, I guess. Uh-huh. It was a little bit more interesting to try and you know keep your own identity, but also make sure the people that were there were interested and like keep them excited about you as a new group that they see. They're like, this is fucking weird. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe you should pay attention to this instead of just like 
here's my hardcore band, here's my reggae band, here's my ska band, here's my full on punk band. We're like, okay, we have samba in our music. Right. We, yeah, it's like we just like to play music in general, and it became a, a thing, you know, for a while in the beginning stages for sure, because you wanted to make sure you made an impact because we were new to this whole thing, mm-hmm. and we were like just hitting the bricks running and every night was a different band different crowd and you just do what you did and kept true to yourself and uh here we are still not dead yet sure. yeah <laughs> <laughs> still going you know what 25 plus years later 27 28 this year i think Jeez. wow wow you guys so, did a big tour for the 25th anniversary didn't you uh we did do a tour well we had one plan at least and you know obviously the pandemic kicked in and so yeah. things got back quite a lot we had a 20, 20 year anniversary album, um, which 25 or 20 years, one of those two. But we did a full album, like a double double feature album uh-huh. uh, here in Phoenix and released it. And then all of a sudden the pandemic hit and it was our big year to go out and promote it, but it didn't happen. And so we're kind of gearing up to like, uh, we have a new album out, All the Oxen Free, yeah. that we're uh, now hoping to promote this year. Things are opening up a bit more. And yeah, you guys have a tour booked, right? Yeah, we got uh, to so release it. Yeah. I'm curious to know, like, I mean, doing 300 shows a year and then were you guys kind of in the, the schedule of put a record out tour, put a record out tour? Was it like that cycle, like the traditional cycle when you're, you know, I mean, the past few albums, I would assume. In that zone. Yeah. In that, in that point in time, in the beginning stages with the uh, lava stuff, it was really like album out by seeing so, about two years, you'd be 42 before you know it. Uh huh. You know, I was like, <laughs> like, get out there and go. It's like, oh well, okay. Um, but from there, we've done ind- um, independent releases through yeah. different companies and things of that nature. And it's still been like, get out there. We got to, you got, you know, you're always got to be out there promoting your album. You, you know, got to back it up and play it live for the fans and friends. And so you really, you really got to muscle up and like get ready for that kind of thing. And we had a phase just recently where we had like three albums put out basically in four years. Mm-hmm. So we definitely hit the road as hard as we could during those time frames and like promoted as hard as we could. And now we're excited to get out and do the new one. You put a you put an EP out pretty recently too, right? Right prior to the new record. Um, or am I confused? Um. Oh, we did. Yes, I'm sorry. Uh, the back nine. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's it's kind of a teaser, kind of a fun thing. It's like, again, nothing was happening with touring. Nothing was happening with like, really anything playing live. So we're like, well, we recorded the song. Let's at least give people something to listen to that, you know, make them aware that we're working on things. Right. And, uh, that it's been a progressive process, and uh, so we did. It's back nine. It was like six songs. Mm-hmm. Um, Tell the back nine, and there's that song on there as well as a few others, and then the new record fully came out not too long back uh, all the other oxen free right 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 well where were you guys at when the pandemic hit were you on tour no we were home oh you were home we were home okay. the time yeah kind of chilling and all of a sudden things started getting crazy shit okay and then when when do you guys write the back nine was it during this whole thing and i mean even all the oxen free oh yeah no we had the whole time down we you know we were at home and my my bass player and a friend, Mikey, lives down the street, Mike Sparrow. And uh, him and I would really start just writing songs back and forth, even through like Garage Band, stuff like that, too. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it was like that weird. And it was like super, super awkward to uh-huh. like be around friends. You know, it was like, I'm all, hey, you're four blocks away, but don't get me up with the Garage Band thing. You know, <laughs> and I'd be like, take the acoustic guitar. I'm like, I've got a thing, dude. Kind of like you and I are doing right now. It's yeah. Like, like a yeah, Zoom like, call. What do you got, dog? What do you got? You know, it's like <laughs> he's far more advanced a guitar player than I am. So I, I'd be like the basic, like, here's a melody, here's a melody, here's a thing, and I think what this, and he'd be like, oh, check us out. You know, he his butt has some weird shit, and I'm like, I don't know what you're doing right now. <laughs> <laughs> so that really morphed the entire process of the writing abilities that we had. It was him down the street, you know, Dally's back home, uh, our guitar player at the time, Dan A had bowed away from the band, unfortunately. But I mean, that given we had the time to do rearrangements and readjustments. And um, 
we just really focused on just the songs between Mike, myself, and then Dally. Uh, we'd send him some track, some songs, and we're like, like, what do you got for beats on this thing? You know, mm-hmm. and uh, it all came together as a free piece, really. And then you know, we wrote all the songs, got them put together, got the studio. We actually recorded in the studio with just Mike on guitar and bass, uh, which he's a brilliant guitar player and bass player, and he also had to do backup vocals at the time, which was like, I was like, dude, are you sure you want to do this? Like, this is a lot of load. This is a load, dude. Yeah. Like, I, even like singing like these you know 13 songs in a row like all the backups the harmonies and stuff on my end i know it's already a lot you know mm-hmm. any musician could say that it's like it's it's a process you know you got to keep your shit healthy and like all that stuff and it gets difficult but he did he muscled up and he played all the guitar parts he wrote on top of that and all the extra additives baseball bass lines uh back of vocals you know lead vocals on parts as well and uh we, we flourished as a three piece for the Ali Dali Oxen Free album and then Enter the Dragon, Mr. Eric Walsh, after our search for a new guitar player from Poor Habit. And mm-hmm. it's brilliant. Wow. Wow. Well, what about the back nine? Was that done virtually too, that record? Or was that songs you guys already had? Uh, that was, no, that was part of the actual recording process. We put that out first. Oh. Keep, let people know we were actually doing something. Gotcha. And then you, so you recorded that, that little, that those songs along with the, the record all kind of at the same time. Yeah. So we had, we had a, a given idea of the entirety of the record. We also had like a few that were already done. We're like, let's at least put something out. Give people something to listen to because we know it's like a, a downer kind of time at the moment. So it'll give people something fun to like look forward to. Mm-hmm. And then from there came the rest of the record. Wow. And you've got a pretty big tour coming, you know, October. And have you had a chance to play any shows yet? Or are you still waiting on that? We just played our first uh, C release party at the Marquee Theater in Tampa, Arizona. How was that? It was brilliant. It was awesome. It was so was like, an emotional was so- night, I'm sure, right? <laughs> Getting back. It was such a good night, man. We all had such a great time. Like the whole band was like, we're all shell shocked. It was Eric Walsh, our guitar players. First show, actually, besides we played Mexico before that, uh, down in Rocky Point with Roger Klein for his first break open show. Okay. And that was a lot of fun. But our first actual show, which we thought was really cool, uh, hometown wise, was at the Marquee Theater here in uh, just south, north Tempe, south Scottsdale. Um, and it was just like people showed up in numbers. It was great to see everybody out there. And, we had a great time. It was a huge production. It's probably one of the biggest shows we played locally in a long time. So wow. It was, it was cool to break out the album with that kind of response and so many smiling faces. Were people going nuts? Probably the first show they've seen in, what, a year and a half? Dude, yeah. I mean, <laughs> us, us, them, this family, everybody, like, you could see the excitement and feel the energy in the room more than it's been in a long time, for sure. Do you feel like this record would have came together differently or the songs maybe have came together differently if it wasn't for the state of the situation? Like, I don't know. I really don't know. It's like, it's, it's always like everything's written with intent and like um, lifestyle, like, you know, day-to-day, day-to-day life, touring, you know, uh, you name it. But I mean, this year and a half of having time to write with each other and like really kind of like, look inside and look outside of each other, you know, as a band in general, and plus with the change ups of the members, uh-huh. you never know what to expect. And it's like, I think because of all of this madness that's been going on and suing, uh, it's, I think it definitely had a huge impact on the writing abilities of this record and song, song choice um, direction wise. You probably haven't had a chance to do that. Like since the first record, right? I mean, just because you guys are always, once the, band started to get some success you haven't stopped i would think right yeah you keep going and then you start writing about like you know how bummed you are on tour or how happy <laughs> you were. Or, i sucked and how it's a, a shitty week uh i didn't even cough this morning i got too drunk last night you know it's like all those things <laughs> that's what you start writing about you're like oh, right boo you know sometimes <laughs> it's like with this it's like shit i can relax in my office this office right here uh-huh. And just chill out, get my acoustic guitar, call my buddy down the street, Mikey, you know, and be like, let's write a track. You got some ideas? I don't know. We got time to like marinate. 
mm-hmm. rather than just like just go you know right. completely have to do this it's like we don't have to do shit yeah right exactly like i'm in, i'm more inspired now than i've been in a long time because not politically not because of x x this and the other thing it's like just watching looking around me you know in my own household in my uh families and my uh you know friendships and the world in general you know you watch the news a little bit i try not to as much as possible um because it can through things but all around just like seeing the effects of it's almost like being still Mm -hmm. yeah yeah like being still for a minute and actually observing and feeling and like looking around and like stopping for a second because like you said we don't have a lot of time to do that right it really is is which is interesting because a lot of people I've talked to were either really inspired like you were or not inspired at all because it's like, I don't have anything to write about. I'm just looking at the same walls. I'm stuck in my house. Like, Yeah, but if you stop actually just for a moment and like observe like what's going on around you because there's chatter here and there everywhere, everywhere. Now, this is good. This is bad. This is the right one. This is the wrong one. This is the left. This is the right. All of that shit. Right. You just, like, what do I think? What do I feel like? What do I actually, actually feel instead of being, uh, you know, pressured in either way or direction of like how I should. And that's where this album came from. It was like just observation and inner, inner inflection, I guess. Uh I love it. And I appreciate you doing this, uh, Jason. Thank you so much. Yeah, you too, man. Thank you for that. Yeah. And I have one more question before I let you go. I want to know if you have any advice for aspiring artists yeah uh, just be true to yourself honestly keep at it i mean we started what we talked about this in the interview is not easy you know that sometimes it happens faster for most than not but uh, if you stick with it and you really are passionate about it and you have a lot to say and a lot you feel about it and want to be a part of it uh, and reflect that to others and hopefully they can get something from it as well uh, but most importantly yourself and that'll be all the difference in the world and it'll make for great songs and for progression Bring it back for-